today we're going to be talking about color. So we're going to need a couple of things. We'll need our colored pencils from our art bag. We'll need a quarter and we'll need something to draw our circles. So I have a couple things here and before I send you off to get these things, that's too small. I have too much paper left over. This is too big. It hangs off my paper. It hangs off my paper. So I need something medium sized. So for most of you, that's going to be the object that you use for your large circle in our intersecting circles. So please go ahead and get those things. And if you don't have your color pencils and your art bag, then you will need to take really good notes and you will need a blank piece of paper. Today we're going to use our whole sheet of paper. Okay, so go ahead and get that. When we think about how artists use color, color has been a part of art for a very long time. So if we think back to the Renaissance, we have Leonardo da Vinci's very famous work. Some of you, most of you probably have seen it before and some of you may remember that the name of this painting is the Mona Lisa. Now at first glance, this painting looks kind of brown, but there are a lot of colors in here that are not brown. And during the time of the Renaissance, they used a lot of earthy tones. So today we're going to use color and next time we're going to use color. And we'll discover how many colors it takes to make an artwork, okay? Now let's look at somebody a little bit more modern. Some of you may recognize this artwork. This is by another very famous artist. This is titled Starry Night and it is by Vincent van Gogh. In this painting we have a lot of color contrasts. Yellow and orange against blue and purple. Some colors look pretty dark. In fact, in some places it looks like his painting is outlined in black, but it is actually not black. He did, however, outline um, some of these things in the foreground. But color plays a very important part. In this painting, color and value contrasts are very important. Light against dark. Light against dark with the lights on in the buildings at night. The stars in the sky. The swirls and so on and so forth. So he also used a lot of different colors to make those paintings. Here is another very famous painting, which also happens to be by Mr. Van Gogh. And this painting is called Sunflowers. And again, he has uh, contrasting colors, light against dark. And even though the basic color in his sunflowers and the table are yellow-orange, there is a lot of variety there. And so we're going to talk about how to get some of those um, interesting colors and make our artwork. Hey, is that the one that sold for $87 million? That is correct. It sold for $87 million. So he didn't get to enjoy that kind of um, income in, during his lifetime. He was very poor. But uh, art does pay if you are in the right spot at the right time. Okay? All right. By now we have our materials and we're going to start by on the back of our paper creating our grade sheet. So divide your paper in half and in half and in half. So we have our four areas, put our information at the top and this assignment is called color wheel. Okay, um, and make, go ahead and make our four divisions. We'll talk about how to use those other areas next time. On the front of our paper, we're going to use our medium sized circle. I want to be sure that it's going to fit on uh, my paper and I want to center it so I have space all around and I'm going to make a light circle with my pencil. The second thing is I'm going to talk about the face of the clock. Okay, so whether you're looking at the watch or the face of the clock, we're going to use this to build our color wheel. 
If we look at the top, we have 12 and 6. So let's go ahead and make a light pencil line at our 12 and our 6. And we're going to put those numbers here as well. If we go horizontally through the center of the clock, we have 3 o'clock and we have 9 o'clock. So let's mark those and mark 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock. In between 3 and 12, we have 1 and 2. So we're going to kind of make two marks there between the 3 and the 6. We have two marks there between the 9 and the 6. We need to make a mark for 7 and 8. And between 9 and 12, we need a 10. And 11 so those should be equidistant apart okay all right so now we're going to use our quarter and at our quarter we're going to make inside the circle we're going to make our first circle at 12 o'clock and carefully go around okay and let's make our six o'clock. It's important to make it inside the circle. Don't be in a hurry. We want to make that circle shape. Okay, next let's do three and nine, same way. All right, now, um, let's continue and make all of our marks inside the circle at each mark and then we're going to come back and start our color wheel. So we will need our box of pencils. And when we are finished with our circles, we will have 12 circles in positions similar to the numbers on the clock. All right, now that looks pretty good. Next, we're going to take out our colored pencils and instead of taking them all out, let's take out uh, our primary colors. Let's take them all out first. Okay. And we have our main group of colors, and those are our primary colors. We're going to take those out first. Red, yellow, and blue. Now, I want you to use the darker blue for that. Okay. So those are our primary colors and I have, yes, the right ones. All right, so on our paper here, we're going to write in the lower right corner, primary equals red, yellow, and blue. And you may abbreviate those or just use the first letter, R, Y, and B, okay? And so, or you can write those out. Okay, primary colors, remember, are those we cannot mix. So we're going to start with red, and we're going to put red at 12 o'clock. So let's go ahead, and we're going to come back and fill that in in just a moment. Okay, our next set of colors is Okay, so let's go ahead and fill that in. And I want to be careful that I'm not going over the edge of the circle. In some of our other drawings, when we've been adding shading and value, we've talked about how it's important to go the same direction with our lines. And so we want to do that here, okay? And I want to go all the way to the edge if it's not smooth, then I can make a whole second layer going 
all the way edge to edge. Okay, all right, so there's our red. And let's go ahead and label that. Okay, our next color is going to be yellow. Okay, now we're not going to put it at um, three o'clock because we have to skip three. So we're going to go one from red. Count one, two, three, four, and our yellow is going to come here. So let's think about, we have 12 circles on our wheel. 12 divided by our three primary colors is four. Okay, so 12 divided by three is four. So we're going one, two, three, and the yellow goes in our fourth one. So let's outline our yellow. And I'm pressing medium hard. And uh, I'm going to label this one with pencil because of the yellow will not show up well on the white paper, okay? And then my next color for the primary is blue. So I'm going to count one, two, three, and in the fourth circle is going to be blue. Okay, and I'm going to label that blue and I'm going to fill that circle. And again, I want to make sure that as much as possible, I'm going to the edge of the circle and filling that in. Okay, so now the next set of colors, now I have three here and three here and three here. So our next set of colors are the secondary colors. And let's write that down. And the secondary colors I get by mixing the, the red and yellow. I get by mixing yellow and blue and I'm mixing red and blue. So in your group of colors, I want you to find green and orange and purple okay so hold up those three colors green orange and purple and uh, those are our three secondary colors uh, purple has two names it is also called violet and so if you look on your colored pencil I think you will see that it's violet first and purple is the second name in parentheses Okay, all right, so we started with red. So we're going to find if we mix half red and half yellow, we get our orange, our secondary color. So halfway between red, I'm skipping one. Orange is the middle color. And we can write orange and fill that shape. Again, I'm careful when I come to the edges so that I don't go outside the lines. There's our orange. Okay, all right. Next, I'm going to do yellow and blue make green. So I'm going to take the green. I'm skipping one. I'm coming to the second circle, which is at our six o'clock and I'm writing green. Now it's really important that we get our main green because we're going to use the other one in just a little bit. So we have two green kinds of green in our box and two kinds of blue. So it's really important to take the darker green, that's our regular green, and our darker blue or it won't work out so well. Okay, all right, so there's our green. And now we have our last secondary color. So if we mix blue and red, we get violet or purple. So I'm going to skip one and come to the next one. 
and let's put violet and just like on our pencils purple okay and we'll fill in that circle these are the secondary colors and there are three of them okay our next group of colors is going to be our intermediate or tertiary colors and let's write that down and let's review our secondary colors we mix red and yellow we got orange so we can write that with an O. We mix blue and yellow. We got green, so we can write that with a G. We uh, mixed uh, blue and red, and we got violet or purple, so we can put down violet. Okay. Now, the other empty spaces we have on our color wheel of 12 are our intermediate or tertiary colors. So we get those by mixing a primary plus a secondary. Okay, so let's take our first one. We have orange, and we're mixing it with red, and that equals red-orange. So all of the basis, or all of the way around our wheel, we're going to use that kind of formula. So we want this circle to be half red and half orange. So we're going to start with orange on the bottom. Sometimes if we start with a darker color, red in this case, uh, the colors don't blend well. We'll push it harder or light. And I want to use light pressure because if I push hard, the colors will not blend well. The colors get kind of a waxy surface and it's helpful if I go the same direction and use the same pressure with the, co the second color. And I can blend those on my paper. Now, if I push too hard and get it too red, then I can come back and give it another layer of uh, orange. But if I've pushed hard, it's going to be hard to blend. So I'm going to use a light pressure. The color should be different from red, and it should be different from orange. And let's remember to label it. Which one do you put first? We always list the primary color first. It's not orange-red. It's red-orange. Okay? All right? Um, now we're going to go to our next one. Yellow is lighter than orange. So I'm going to go ahead and outline first. The outline kind of acts a little bit as a break, so it helps the pencil stop when I get to that edge. And again, I'm using a light pressure. And now I'm coming back with orange. I've already outlined it, so I don't really need to do that twice. If you find you're having difficulty staying inside the shape, you might want to add the outline. And again, I'm using the same direction of lines that I used the first time, and I'm using a light pressure. Okay, and this one is our, yellow is our primary color, so it's yellow-orange with the dash in between. Okay, all right. Next, I have yellow-green. Yellow is lighter than green, so again, I'm going to start with yellow. And it's really important that I don't skip or skimp on the yellow at the edges of the circle. Otherwise, it's going to be a different color there. And I'm using light pressure. If I use heavy pressure, the color pencil won't blend. Now this looks a little streaky, so maybe I'll come back and go a different direction with the yellow. I'm going crisscross, okay? 
So you can work on smoothing that out. But again, the yellow green should be different from the yellow and should be different from the green. The primary color comes first in the name. Okay. Our next color is blue-green. Blue and green are kind of about the same value. So let's go ahead and use green first. Again, light pressure, very important. Make sure that you get the edge. Sometimes it's hard to get a whole circle shape at once. But I don't want to go 50 different ways with my lines, or even two different ways. And it's actually a little easier to get the colors to blend if I, my pencils are not so sharp. And now I almost made a goof there. So I have my colors mixed up. Make sure you keep your, I have my primary colors here, my secondary colors here. So before I start, I want to check to be sure that I have the blue and not the purple. Okay. So this is our blue green. And we're getting a nice rich green here. It is not blue and it is not green. It's in between. And we'll label that. Again, blue is the primary color, so it comes first. And green is second. Okay? Between blue and purple, we have blue-violet. Violet is a little bit lighter in the color pencils than the blue. So we're going to add the violet first on this one. Again, remember, light pressure will help you have your colors blend better and more easily. I want to go all the way to the edge. And I'm getting a much smoother, much easier blend now than when I started. Okay. Color pencils sometimes have a little waxy buildup on the surface, so that's good. Okay, and this is blue, that's our primary color, violet. All right, now between purple and red, purple is darker, so we're going to start with red first. The reason again for having the lighter color on the bottom is it's easier to control the color that we get when mixing colors if the lighter color is on the bottom. And I'm again paying attention to the direction of my lines. I want to be sure I go all the way to the edge of the circle. Don't leave any gaps. The smoother it is, the better my colors will be. Okay, and I want to double check and make sure I have the violet. Yes, I do. Okay, going the same direction. Now, all colors blend this same way. Okay. So if I'm working with paint or with oil pastels or with crayon or with pastel chalk, they all blend the same way. However, sometimes different materials are made by different companies or because they're wet or dry, the mixing occurs a little differently on the paper or the colors will be brighter or duller, more dull. Okay. All right, that one looks not quite so smooth. I might want to go over that with a, um, another layer of red later. Okay, and that is red-violet. Okay, now we have done our color wheel. We have our primary colors, the red, the yellow, and the blue. And um, we have our secondary colors the orange and the green and the purple and they make a triangle. So 
if you have your ruler and your pencil, we're going to add our triangle. I don't have my ruler, so I'm going to draw a line to connect the red and the blue and then go across to the yellow so it's going to make a triangle pointing up and because it, they are primary colors I'm going to have one line. The secondary colors let's go ahead and label that here primary okay now we're going to connect our secondary colors so I'm going to start with purple and orange and orange to green and purple to green now usually when we are using color in class and paint we double up our lines we will also label it but visually sometimes it really helps to see that double lines help remind us that these are our secondary colors and I see that this is a little cattywampus over here so I'm going to change that okay so we are not going to label our intermediate colors because those are the ones we have left over. What I would like you to add, we have done and ex our, listed our primary colors, we've listed our secondary colors, and we have done one example in our notes for our tertiary or intermediate colors. On the back of your paper, I would like you to write the, all of the tertiary or intermediate colors. And I think it will help you if you put the formula. So it's the primary color plus the secondary color equals our intermediate color. Okay, and it can't just be any one. So if my secondary color is orange, I have to think about the color that is the primary color that's in orange. So I have to use red as the primary, and that gets me red orange. Okay, now interestingly, I have two oranges green is a secondary color. So I have two greens and I have two violets and that gives me my six um, tertiary or intermediate colors. So red is in orange, the other color in orange is yellow. So that equals yellow orange. In green I have blue. and I have yellow. So that gets me blue, blue green and yellow green. In purple or violet I have red and I have blue. So in blue violet that would be blue BV in red violet I have red RV okay now we have one set of colors that we have not talked much about and that is the colors that we have left over and I lost one okay so we're taking we're not talking about the red orange or the light blue or the yellow green we have three colors left over and we are going to add this to our notes also. These three colors are called neutral colors. N-E-U-T-R-A-L. Neutral colors. 
and they are not on the color wheel. White, um, when you think of a rainbow, you don't see white, you don't see black, and you don't see brown. So neutral colors equal black, white, and brown. Technically, in science terms, white is the reflection of all colors equally, black is the absorption of all colors equally, and for brown, we mix different combinations of colors to get those, and we'll be talking more about how to get brown later. So for now, we're just having our primary, secondary, intermediate, or tertiary colors, and our neutral colors. Okay, remember for next time to finish your color wheel on the front, make sure your colors are smooth and your colors are labeled. And next time we will need our peach drawing and our colored pencils for our next class.